Reading of the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Let us attend. At that time, when Jesus returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was at home, and many were gathered together, so there was no longer room for them, nor even out the door. And he was preaching the word to them. And they came bringing to Jesus a paralytic carried by four men. And when they could not get near Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof from above him. And when they had made an opening, they let down the pallet on which the paralytic lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there reasoning in their hearts. Why does this man speak thus? It is blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? And immediately Jesus, perceiving in the spirit that they thus reasoned within themselves, said to them, Why do you reason thus in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven. Or to say, Rise, take up your pallet, and walk. But that you might know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive you. I said to you, rise, take up your pallet, and go home. And he rose and immediately took up the pallet and went out before them all, so that all remained to glorify God, saying, We never saw anything like this. Glory to the In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Christ is in our midst. He is where we shall be. I was uh, shopping yesterday. I went into a store. There was nobody there. Except for one other person. <clears throat> that person was wearing a surgical mask. Felt like a scene out of the Twilight Zone. And uh, I got to the front counter where I was going to check out, and there was this probably 19-year-old young woman standing at the checkout, sanitizing everything as I was approaching. And I looked at her, and she looked at me kind of sheepishly, and I said, are you scared? She said, yes, I am. And I said, it's okay. And she said, I'm just so thankful to see someone who's looking normal. <laughs> Everybody's all freaked out, right? They are. Everybody's all freaked out. To think that you could have an exchange with someone like that at a store, someone who you don't know. Not wanting to say anything to upset a customer. And here we are today, about half of us missing. Hopefully everybody's healthy and has just taken some kind of a staycation spring break or something. But no, we have a responsibility as the church. The world, the checkout girl, everybody seems to be kind of frightened. Isolated, alone. It would be easy for us to feel sorry for ourselves. It would. To focus completely on ourselves. I mean, we're told all about how we're supposed to be practicing good hygiene and all of these things, and of course that's important. But what does that do? It puts the focus on ourselves. So after we wash our hands, we need to get out of here and we need to get somewhere else. Because we're the church. 
We are the church. If we don't do this, who's going to? People are just dying for company. They're dying for someone to say, are you okay? They're dying for a conversation. They're dying for a card in the mail or a phone call well placed. They may or may not be dying to see a casserole at their door, I'm not sure. But you know, people need people. We are made for communion. We are made to be together. We are made to be with one another. The Lord said, it is not good for man to be alone. So what happens when we isolate ourselves? We start going a little bit loony. We do. Now it's understandable that we do this in order to protect ourselves and protect others, especially those at the highest risk, right? Understood. And I'm not encouraging everybody to go out and try to put together 5,000 person gatherings just to be defiant. That would be ridiculous. It has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. What I am talking about is that we are the hands and feet of Christ in the world. That's us. That is our charge. What was the gospel about today? So beautifully placed by Christ on this Sunday, at this time when we're in the middle of this kind of a thing? What's the gospel? It is about these men who are bringing somebody to Christ because he can't get there himself. Because he was isolated. He couldn't walk. He couldn't get up. He couldn't go anywhere. Except for those who believed in Christ and His healing power were to bring Him and place Him there before the feet of Christ. And not only that, they went to all sorts of crazy trouble to do it. They tore the roof off. Right? There were difficulties. It would have been easy to say, well, this is impossible. I can't get through the door. Hey, Jesus! Can you come outside or send a blessing from where you are? That's not what they did. What did they do? They got up on the roof and they started pulling it back. And they found some ropes and they lowered him down in the midst of the house and laid him at the feet of Christ. In other words, they did what seemed impossible, certainly improbable, in order to minister to somebody else who needed it. I don't know about you, but I don't want to sit around for another six weeks wondering if there are germs floating through my yard. I have no interest in doing that. Right? Why? Because I don't like to live in my head. I don't want to live in my head. This morning, watching with us, yes, thank you for the recording. We're going to be live streaming the liturgy for a while. And some of the people who are watching today are from Washington State. They're watching because their church doesn't have a recording of the liturgy available or live streaming. Now, if you know anything about Washington State right now, it is ground zero for coronavirus deaths. Right? So, yesterday I called a friend of mine who is a priest out there in Snohomish County, which you have all heard on the radio if you listen to the radio, right? Where there are a lot of bad things happening. And I said, how are you doing in the middle of this? And he said, I'm okay. His voice sounded old. He's my age. He sounded old. He said, it's been a really, really long couple of weeks. I said, I bet. He said, I have 16 parishioners in uh, self-quarantine right now with coronavirus symptoms. I said, really? He said, yeah, our brother priest down the road, uh, one of our other friends, one of the other Kerygma members, um, who is a priest in Washington, uh, just <coughs> lost his first parishioner to coronavirus. So it's real. It's unorthodoxy, right? It's like it's affecting us. It affects everybody. And so those people who are in self-quarantine at home, Father David was going to call them and, and tell them that they could watch the liturgy today and be with us here in Bloomington, Indiana. Thanks be to God. So what is our job then as the church in the middle of this kind of a situation? What's our job? Well, I'm going to say that our job is actually laid out before us beautifully as a Lenten podvig. That's this Russian word. It means a, like your own personal spiritual 
challenge or struggle like this. What do we do during Lent? Well, first of all, it's called the season of repentance. Why does the Lord allow suffering in the world? To draw us to repentance. Right? To draw us to repentance. It's not out there punishing people. But we, through our sin, invite evil and sickness and death into the world. And the Lord, in His mercy, allows suffering that we may turn back to Him and repent. Now, it would be easy for us at that point to say, well, all these evil people in the country, the Lord needs to do, allow these things to bring them to repentance. That would not be an orthodox stance. That's not what we say in orthodoxy. Right? We say, help me to see my own sins and not to judge my brother. So if there is a reason for repentance in the world, it is because of me. I need to repent. Which actually gives me an opportunity. It gives me a, a responsibility for my own sinfulness, right? And it gives me an opportunity to, to do something positive, to repent, and to, uh, to, to do something positive in the face of a negative situation. So here we are in the season of repentance. So let's all repent. Number one. Now what are the things that we do in Lent? We pray, we fast, and we practice good works. Well, today is a national day of prayer. Not only is it the national day of prayer in this time of difficulty, but in this time we should be led, prompted to pray all the more and all the more fervently. Should we not? We should be. We should be praying for all of those around us. We should be praying for those in our family, for those in our church community, especially for the most vulnerable in our church community. Uh, we should be praying for our city, for our country, and for our world. We should be praying for our civil authorities. Right? We do that in the church. We should do it at home, too. We should be praying for medical personnel and care providers, right? We should increase our prayer. We talk about fasting. What is fasting? Fasting is denying ourselves certain things that we would usually partake of. Well, it's almost like there is this enforced fast going on right now. People who want to go and do this or go and buy this or go and uh, partake in this. Maybe you, want to, you were looking forward to March Madness. Right? It's gone. There is almost this imposed fast on our society. But we were already fasting, right? But let's enter into our fasting all the more. Let us uh, really, really intensely offer up these things that we are deprived of, offer them up as a sacrifice to God. Not just grumble and complain about how I can't have such and such, right? but to willfully and willingly offer it up to God as a sacrifice. To commit to be joyful in the midst of deprivation. And then how about almsgiving, good works, acts of mercy? Again, perfect opportunity. If, no, if, if other people won't do this, right? I mean, the world is really in need of mercy right now. People are in need of a phone call right now. They are. People are scared and isolated. So I encourage each and every one of us to take the time that we would have thought about all the things that we're missing out on or uh, how scary it is out there or um, why are all the conflicting reports about this, that, or the other. Just take that time and let's spend it looking out for other people. It might not be that we're going to be cleaning their house. Some people might not want us in their house. right? But as I said before, at the very least, we can place a phone call. We can write a letter. Right? We can do something helpful to people. Find out what they do need. Are you out of toilet paper? Seems the world is running out of toilet paper. Drop off a couple roll rolls in the mailbox, perhaps. We have to think creatively. Right? Really. Like the guys who tore the roof off. We have to think creatively. We have to move in a positive direction when everybody else is moving in a negative direction. Right? We have got to be the voice of reason and of love and of caring 
in the midst of the voices of fear. We've got to do it. If we don't do it, nobody's going to do it. So there are people who are struggling and suffering. We're here, probably a lot of us woke up this morning and wondered if we should come to church or not. I mean, most of the other churches in town canceled services, so it seems. All over the country, Roman Catholic churches, the doors are closed. They won't let anybody in. In in the West Coast, parts of the West Coast, they're saying, the doors probably won't even open until Easter, if that. Right? So people are, they're, they're starving. They're hungry. What can we do to help? What can we do to help? That should be our orientation. What can we do to help? How can I help those immediately around me? Let me just encourage you, especially those that we have who are uh, in the nursing homes, assisted care facilities, right? And we have them in the parish, and they're in lockdown. They can't even get out, right? So, um, most especially could use some contact and certainly could use some extra prayers. So, brothers and sisters, we gather today... At the footstool of God, we have the ear of the Lord today, right now. At the beginning of the service, I lifted the gospel and said, Blessed is the kingdom of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And at that point, we left Bloomington, in a sense, and we arrived very quickly and immediately in the kingdom of heaven. That is where we are. So if you have the ear of God, what is it that you want to say to Him? What do you want to ask Him for? We're going to pray for those who are suffering. We're going to pray for those who are healthy to remain healthy. We're going to pray for the caregivers, right? We're going to pray for our leaders, our civil authorities, etc., for our bishops. We're going to pray. We have the ear of God. We're going to intercede for those who are not here. We're going to pray for those who are here. That's what we're going to do. And then when we leave here, having received the Holy Spirit anew, almost like a new Pentecost, right? Every Sunday is the day of the resurrection, Every Sunday is the day that the Lord breathes on his disciples and upon us and says, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. We're going to take that gift. And we are going to leave here. We are going to go out into a world that is feeling very heavy and dank and sad and unsure and fearful. We're going to go out of that world and we are going to be lights because that is what our, we are charged with. That is what we are gifted for. To be lights in a world that needs the light. So I encourage each and every one of us. Encourage one another. Call one another. That's what I'm trying to do with my brother priests. You know, they're all suffering. It's it's hard for everybody. It is. But think in terms of what can I do for those who are around me. Because a lot of people are thinking, what can I do for myself? A lot of people are just protecting their little their family. That's important. But we need to think outside of the box. And think of how can I help other people outside of my own little sphere. Okay? So God bless and protect and inspire and inflame each and every one of us. That we may go out and bring the gift of his love and of his grace into into this town, into our neighborhoods, into a world that needs it so badly right now. If we don't do it, who's going to do it? We are the hands and the feet of Christ in the midst of this community. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Christ is in our midst. He is and shall be.